So, child actors. <laughs> this channel is one that talks about Percy Jackson. So this is definitely something that I think a lot about. Uh, there's been a lot of documentaries and just former child actors speaking out in the last few years that kind of culminated in the Quiet On Set documentary coming out and making people abundantly aware of just how bad the abuses in the entertainment industry can be. Uh, but one thing that I can't stop thinking about, which is why I'm making this video, is what do new neurodivergent kids who are in the entertainment industry do? Is there anyone around that like knows anything at all about how to help them? I feel like the answer to that is no, because I, this is the kind of stuff that I spend time thinking about. There has to be, like, there has to be a good amount of neurodivergent children who end up becoming child actors or performers in some way. Because when you really look at it, especially if you're autistic, I'm autistic, so I feel like I can speak a bit on this. Um, one thing that happens sometimes when you're autistic is you get a special interest that is like directly relatable to like a job like so a special interest for an autistic person is basically some like interest you have that lasts for like years and years and years like it lasts for it can last for like your entire life it's something that you don't always spend your time thinking about maybe but it's something that is kind of that can come back many many times for you it's comforting for you because it's something that you have um percy jackson is a special interest of mine i am sure that there are kids that are in hollywood right now whose special interest is performing is singing is acting is learning movies and tv shows and stuff and figuring out how all of that stuff works or just memorizing them like when i was a kid um there were movies that I had memorized from like beginning to end that I would sit there because I'm old. <laughs> the movies that I did this with was the original Lion King. There's a version of Casper that came out in like 1995 and Hocus Pocus. And I would watch those movies and I would choose what character in the movie I wanted to do the lines for and I would recite every single line in that movie for the entire movie. I also did Star Wars that way. I watched the original trilogy a million times when I was growing up um, in the same exact way. Um, and so if you're a kid that's neurodivergent and your special interest is movies and you end up becoming, being a really good actor, you can like kind of get by in Hollywood because your special interest that you like literally cannot stop thinking about is something that directly correlates into a job. But does that mean that Hollywood actually knows how to take care of you? No, absolutely not. I think that's like shown pretty well with all of these documentaries that they don't. Hollywood is a very ableist sort of world. Ableism basically discriminated against somebody for being disabled. I feel like a lot of child actors would have to hide that they were disabled in order to continue to get the parts that they want. And it's one of those ironic things that like the reason why they're so good sometimes is because of that if they have a special interest in it but they have to lie about who they are in order to continue to get acting roles and have fun with that special interest which is just messed up <laughs> one thing that i argue over is that i'm glad that gabe did not was not as bad as he was in the book in the like overtly abusive way he is still abusive and i will never like not argue about that but I am relieved that they didn't make Walker Scobell as a 13 year old child act out somebody screaming at him and hitting him. Because no matter if he knew that this wasn't real, that he was acting out a character that this other actor in this scene doesn't actually feel like that about him, 
you're still going through the emotions of doing that. Like you're still, you're still like kind of tapping into emotions inside of you. And it's going to take time for them to like kind of go through the emotions that they feel, even if they know they're not like necessarily real and calm down after doing a scene like that. And when it comes to Percy Jackson stuff, I think about this because the third season of Percy Jackson is so intense. A 12 year old child is murdered and Percy goes looking for her dead body for hours on end before giving up and realizing that they're not going to find her. And that's just one of the things <laughs> that happens in that season. It's very intense. It's very serious. It's a very serious headspace for basically everyone who is on the show as a regular character who would be on screen during that season. No one is having a good time. Everyone's going through really hard times. Can't help but think like, is there anyone on set when these kid actors are going through these scenes that helps them process those emotions especially if some of those kids could be somewhere in the neurodivergent scale um and i don't mean just adhd and autism neurodivergency is a lot of different things are there people are there adults on set that are there to help these kids process through those feelings instead of them bottling them all up because they don't want to cause a problem when they're on set and like pushing them away until they become so much that they just come like spilling out of them you're gonna go with like autistic or kids particularly sometimes we have a hard time separating what we're actually responsible for and so i just wonder like there's a lot of like sensory overload things that I can only imagine exist when you're on a movie or TV set. There's a lot of people talking at the same time. There's a lot of bright lights. There's a lot of special effects. There's a lot of like your, it's a good environment I think for a lot of people who have like autism particularly because every day is different. Um, there's a lot of downtime so you have time to like kind of go off on your own you don't have to do the same thing every day you have times in between set like in between cuts to kind of explore and do your own thing instead of having to sit there and be like in the same place all the time but it does make me wonder like is there anyone on set who thinks about this stuff besides besides people like me like I don't think that I'm special I'm sure that there are other people that think about things like this but I just had to put this out here on the internet because I genuinely like wonder like